Welcome to this short video on the role of stress in feline disease. Um, we're not going to focus on bladder disease here. There is another video um, particularly looking at that, and I, I ask you to go and have a look at that. But here we're going to look at the other diseases. And there are a lot. Cats are very easily stressed, and we're going to talk about that um, in a little minute. But I wanted to, to show you just how many diseases that we either already know for sure are made worse by stress. Um, or ones where we suspect it to be very much the case. So classic ones to start with are the ones that deal with eating and drinking and peeing and pooing. So certainly the eating ones, so stress a cat, bring it in the hospital, anything like that, but stress at home, then anorexia or reduced voluntary food intake, just being a picky eater, is the most common response. And of course, that's something we see in humans as well. There are so many similarities between cats and humans here. And so there's lots of us. When we get stressed, we don't want to eat properly. But it can go the other way as well. And we see bulimia in cats. Classically, you see bulimia where cats um, feel threatened at feed times. Cats would naturally be solitary hunters, and hence they would eat their food solitary. They wouldn't have other animals around. So for a cat to have to sit beside another cat that they don't like when they're trying to eat, it's very stressful. So what they tend to do is they bolt their food and then run away, and then, and then they vomit it up. So bulimia is a classic stress response in cats. And of course, we see that in humans too. Obesity with stress eating, very common in both species, and in cats, as in humans, that really increases your risk of obesity-related disorders, diseases, so things like diabetes, joint disease, heart disease, etc., all can be made worse by stress and stress eating. Some of these cats show um, episodic vomiting, some show episodic diarrhea, some show both. That can be altered um, gastrointestinal time, so it's just going through much quicker. They can have spasms, like IBS in humans. Um, also, the uh, stress reduces their immune response, which means they're more prone to secondary infections as well. And inappropriate defecation is an important one. It's not very nice to live with, and that can relate to abdominal pain, etc., such that the cat doesn't, isn't comfortable in the litter box and is going somewhere else. I've got a lovely picture of a fur ball here, and fur balls are a classic stress response. Cats shouldn't actually, it's not normal. People tend to think fur balls are normal. If a cat has got very long fur, okay, it can be, but for normal cats, normal fur, then it's not normal to have fur balls. Either it's a sign of stress affecting their gut or it's stress affecting their skin and they're over grooming. That's resulting in too much fur going in. And where some cats will get fur balls and vomit up the fur balls, others get a lot of constipation because all the fur going through their system. And that can lead to inappropriate urinate, inappropriate defecation. And I love these cartoons. You can see that this little cat, he really wants his dinner but he has to sit next to a bully boy to get his dinner, and he's either going to develop bulimia or he's going to become anorexic because of it. So remember, cats don't share at mealtimes. They don't share well at all. Other diseases that are stress-related, well, the respiratory diseases. So cats that have chronic upper respiratory tract signs, so snuffles, snots, these are often stress-related and made much, much worse by stress. Cats get feline herpes virus, which causes chronic flu, because it's acute flu, which can then become chronic flu. And if you think about it, it's a herpes virus, it goes latent. So just like us, when we're stressed and our cold sores come out, that's a herpes virus. Cats are the same, they're stressed and their flu virus comes out. And so when cats develop flu in a cattery, it is not normally that they've just caught it, it's their own flu that's come back out again. Because Khaleesi virus, the other major virus involved with flu, is also stress-related and will become much worse with stress. And then if you go down into the lungs, obviously secondary infections predisposed uh, with um, cats that are stressed. But just like asthma in humans, we know that asthma in humans is very stress-related. It doesn't seem to be quite so stress-related in cats, but it's an important um, stress response. So that's worth remembering. And then cardiomyopathy, this data is not quite so strong, but we've got a strong suspicion that cats that have got heart disease are more likely to go into heart failure if they're in a multi-cat household and they're under a lot of stress. So that might be an important player as well. I've already mentioned overgrooming, and certainly overgrooming, either they can result in baldness, say, or fur balls, or they can damage their skin.
but you can also see um, chin acne developing, secondary infections and things like that. So overgrooming is a really big player as a stress-related disorder. The um, other video is particularly focused on idiopathic cystitis and obstructive cystitis, so please go and have a look at that. But it is important to remember that feline idiopathic cystitis is life-threatening. If these cats get a urinary obstruction and it's not intervened, then it's going to kill them. And long-term, untreated um, inflammatory bladder, so idiopathic cystitis, can result in transitional cell carcinoma in cancer of the bladder. So that's really important to remember. Then bladder stones, not as common as stress bladder, but interestingly, in humans and cats, oxalate stones are seen in individuals that live in the city, so developed society, um, on processed food and a stressful lifestyle, which I think is fascinating that the two are so similar. Inappropriate urination, yes, it can be straight behavioural, but it can also very much relate to inflammatory bladder problems, idiopathic cystitis. And poor drinking. If you're stressed, then you tend not to remember to want to drink um, if you're a pussycat. Um, you don't want to go to where the water bowl is, etc. So that will make anything that has got inflamed bladder a whole lot worse. So obviously these are very important conditions. And it doesn't stop there, because actually there's a whole load of more diseases that can be stress-related. So hepatic lipidosis, so where you, the cat has got obese, um, and then so much such fat is laid down in the liver that the liver starts failing. That is again life-threatening. Obesity itself, as I mentioned, predisposes to diabetes and we believe that diabetes is also made worse by stress. Hypothyroidism may also have a role in there. Uh, the data on that one isn't quite so good, but hypertension certainly is. High blood pressure. High blood pressure is very much stress-related and ultimately that can result in blindness, strokes with brain hemorrhages, heart disease, and kidney failure. So hypertension is a really important disease to consider with this group. And then the others, dental disease, yep, it's a player, and then all the true behavioral problems as well. So I hope you can see from that, there are so many diseases in the cat that are either directly caused by stress or exacerbated by stress. So I cannot under, I cannot underestimate how important it is to recognise stress in cats because they're very good at hiding it. So why are cats so easily stressed? Well, you have to go back to where cats came from and what their natural behaviour is. And they're naturally solitary hunters. They're actually only facultatively social and they can only form social uh, structure in quite constrained environments. It's not something they do naturally. The most you would normally get naturally would be maybe a mother cat who kept one of her kittens to help bring up the next layer of kittens in a, um, a maternal creche system. But to have large groups of unrelated cats living together is very abnormal. But of course, that's what we ask them to do when we develop our households with lots and lots of cats. If they're genetically related, there's a tendency for them to get on better, but not always. And certainly certain breeds are better at this than others. Classically, the Orientals are better at living in large groups, but not always. So you always need to think about the cat as a solitary hunter. They don't have all the facial expressions of dogs or humans, so they don't have a lot of the appeasement behaviour that you need to settle disputes. And that's an important thing to think about. They're also a very reactive species. If you think about it, um, they're a prey species. Yes, they're predators, but they're also a prey species, which means they've got to go from asleep to dealing with something really fast. And cats are very good at doing that. And that tends to make them very, very easy to stress. They need to feel in control of their environment. And if they can't feel in control, then they are going to get progressively more stressed. So cats are different from dogs. Cats are different from humans. What sort of stress am I talking about? Well, classically, it is living in a multi-cat household. We're talking about chronic stress. It's not just a, a one-off stress. It's, it's a long-term stress that the cat just cannot deal with. So lack of control of, it in, of its environment, particularly living with another animal it really doesn't like. Classically, that's another cat, but it could be a human. It could be a dog. So if that cat is forced to live with another individual who it doesn't like and it can't get away from them, that's an incredibly stressful situation. 
Other things that can be stressful, um, multiple changes. So maybe the food is at different times. So sometimes breakfast is at eight, sometimes they don't get breakfast at all. That's very stressful. Um, maybe the caregiving arrangements. Sometimes the litter box is cleaned, sometimes it isn't. That's a stressful thing. So you really need cat care to be as consistent as possible so the cat feels it's in control of its environment. Big things that cause stress, moving house. But then it stresses us too, and it tends to be quite noisy, and that's very, very unsettling for a cat. And occasionally you will see stress in a single cat that's in a single cat household. Um, it's a cat that can't go outside, cannot change its environment, and is very, very bonded to the owner. And there you can see separation anxiety. It's not common as a cause of stress, but we certainly do see it makes a cat stressed, I ask that you go to the other video on how to de-stress a cat. Um, that will give you all the pointers you need as a starting point to, to try and make those cats a whole lot happier. Because I hope you'll agree with me that there are so many diseases that can be made so much worse by stress. And is there an advantage to, to sorting that? Yes, of course there is. Because you're going to reduce the risk of these diseases that are caused by stress. You're going to reduce the severity of these diseases that are exacerbated by stress. Um, you're going to re reduce the recurrence of these diseases. That's really going to improve the cat's quality of life. It'll improve the owner's quality of life as well. Um, and reduce the vet bills, which has got to be a good thing, I would say, all around. And ultimately, the cat's going to live longer and be happier. So understanding what causes cat stress and how to put it right is the key cornerstone to so much of feline medicine.